All right. So so that can help a lot with uh, you know giving you that impression of water that's reflecting, but stormy water with waves and stuff like that. Although this almost looks like rock, and there's a couple of mud puddles there, so I didn't quite do a, a, a really good job there with that. Uh, still, you get the idea, and of course we need to fade the horizon, perhaps uh, in some sort of a mist and haze. Um, and there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, one is to perhaps draw something like uh, uh, an alpha channel, uh, or maybe just a, a rectangular region, there like that. Let's go and zoom that out a little bit. And I'll just grab a box around this much. So this selection I want to blur, and that would be done here with the uh, box filter for instance, and we can see it like that. So that will give us an idea of how much blurring we're doing. Now, now you notice it's not doing over the entire image and that's because we are still working on layers and we should probably uh, dismiss that. So let's go blend them together. And we are now working at a single image. Uh, again, a good idea to uh, capture that, store that as well. In fact, it would have been good to, to store each of the layers separately or file them into a layered file. Um, at this point, I can um, grab the selection here, uh, store that also just to make sure that indeed it is kind of opaque or fully selected in the middle along the center of the horizon line and then it kind of fades away. I might want to do that a little bit more actually. Let's go back to uh, selection and Gaussian blur or box filter blur a little bit more. There you go. Something like that. Okay, so so now at this time, let, let's get this one, get the alpha, there you go. Um, so what I'll do now is uh, apply, I don't know, a, a bluish uh, haze or a fog just along this area because the selection is essentially controlling it that way. I might also adjust the alpha a little bit for perhaps a little bit more uh, concentration in the middle. Uh, the gamma will work with that quite nicely. Uh, I can increase the brightness there and make it darker outside. So there is there is a couple of nice controls for that and so we now have a nice little band of uh, haze that we can paint right in there in fact one way to do that is to use this uh, selection mask and simply clear it to white and you see this this is a very strong fog though that's a little bit too strong um, let's go and perhaps undo that with the interactive undo fade last action there you go uh, another way would be to actually uh, perhaps uh, just erase it uh, to black or to another color. Uh, in fact, one good way to do it would be to pick one of these colors, like um, I don't know, like this color here. So let's go with the uh, pickup tool and find that uh, reddish haze. And let's assume we have some fog that will take that tint. So now we can basically, that's the primary color, we can simply erase to the primary. So it will force it to that color and it, if it's not fully opaque we may need to do that two times or three times there you go uh, and then of course we need to add a little bit of sunshine there so uh, one thing we can do for that is uh, the sun is going to be something like a nova we have a couple of stars or, or perhaps the lens flare that's even more impressive let's take this one here that's kind of a nice reddish tint and put it right there of course we need to disable the um, the selection mask, the alpha channel here at that point. There you go. Um, perhaps, let me see uh, some other ones. There, this one here. Yeah, so the sun is just barely making it over the horizon there. Um, there is one more thing that we might want to do, and that's actually to show on the water the reflection of the sky. Right, imagine there's some clouds there, some skies that's still blue, some clouds that are reddish or whitish or black or whatever. Uh, if you want to show that as being uh, reflective, it's a good idea to actually put something there to be uh, to see as a reflection. And so one thing I'll do is I'll switch with uh, J for jump. I'll switch temporarily to um, the swap buffer where we still have this other pattern there. Uh, we could actually use that to do a displacement on this image here too. Uh, notice that we have that under the, the filters. We have displace by swap. Uh, there's a couple of different types of displacements. Color twirl is pretty impressive. The pool displays or cloaking. Uh, this one here uh, might be more interesting if you want to design some new marble textures. Um, but we'll, we'll get back to that. That can actually be quite nice uh, to displace the reflection itself on the water. Um, so let's make sure we grab, we do have a copy of this or close enough um, in the snapshot. So let's let's go to the 
um, where is it there to the swap buffer and erase that and what I'll do instead is I'll put the sky that I want see that I want to eventually see reflected in here so I'll put this guy uh, that's a render sky or maybe you have a photograph you want to put in there right I mean it doesn't have to be generated by the program necessarily uh, it could be painted it could be oh this one's this one's pretty good no there was another one Oh, let's use this one, why not? Let's give it a little bit of a reddish tint towards the horizon. There you go. And the sky color is probably just fine like that. Alright, so, so the idea is we want this reflected on the water, which means essentially we'll need to flip it upside down. Okay, so um, let's go do that. Image uh, flip per vertical. Alright, uh, let's copy that also. You never know, we might need this. Uh, store this image. Alright. Um, and... So at this point, I want to really combine the image that we have here, this one here, with this one here, again, in a way that kind of shows mostly this guy, but with a little bit of presence on this one as well. Uh, so that could be done with layers again, or it could be done with this, uh, the combining of the main buffer and the swap buffer, right? Um, and so perhaps again, you can adjust uh, how much of that you want. Um, let's see, here we got this jump between the two let's say we merge them together here um, let's choose another style here like oh this one's too bright although we could probably use that and uh, you know you gotta experiment with these uh, subtract that makes it very dark that's for nice uh, moonlighting effects um, additive too bright now, there's many styles here. Some of them are looking really great. Reflection, ooh, too much. <laughs> um, glow, yeah. So, like I said, you know, you you'll want to experiment with that until you find the one that really uh, gives you what you're looking for. Probably the uh, the screen, and then and then we can fade the last action again. So, um, yeah, let's let's do that. So let's go like this uh, and merge the two together. There you go. And say, okay, fade it a little bit because we, we want it somewhere between here and here, not, not that much reflection. There you go. And then we can also uh, expand the dynamic range to make it go a little bit darker. So we now see a little bit of the cloudiness there that's being reflected in the water. The only thing that's disturbing is that the clouds are not being uh, distorted I mean there is no distortion on the clouds the clouds are there when in fact you might expect that these clouds to be a little bit distorted and, and deflected and and for to that effect one thing you can do is actually bring in the clouds in a way that they will be um, uh, dislocated that they will be um, what you call it um, displaced right so you you have the clouds here you have the pattern of the water here might as well just use that as a displacement map and that's the displace by swap so you can go here let's say pool or jitter or cloaking display or color twirl display displace so you see the clouds now being displaced here right and that that will make it look quite a bit better uh, especially if you see the clouds really well. I mean, in, in our case, in the, pic in the case of our picture, you don't really see them too well. Uh, but um, still, that is a significant element you don't want to dismiss if you're, if you're combining these things together. Let's, in fact, do that now with a, a multiply mode. Okay. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Let's go uh, merge these. And again, maybe a little bit of an adjustment. There you go. And so now, if you you know if you, if you go and look really here, the clouds that you actually see reflected, they're not too crisp anymore. They are being deflected, and it looks like they correlate to the underlying texture that was actually the same one that we looked uh, that the water is here. So that way, it will look a little bit more like the water is actually displacing the reflected image there on the cloud. Okay, well that uh, sums it up for a quick look at uh, creating all sorts of. Uh, frozen worlds or perhaps uh, stormy water uh, with some sunset conditions, some haze. There's a lot of other uh, techniques and tools that you can use to make it even more sophisticated.
and uh, I want to thank you for attending. If you liked this video, please uh, please click on uh, like and uh, help us uh, uh, be motivated and uh, create a lot more of the uh, wafflings and howlings that you can do with this. Alright, thanks, bye bye.